never forget the moment I met you, moment you called my name, you pulled me out of the dark and gave me a promise to never thirst again. All that I've ever wanted, my heart has found in you. As I have tasted life, nothing satisfies like you do. You're the found. Won't run dry. No, nothing satisfies like you do.
Strong enough to calm the storms, fear and unbelief. Fierce enough to break the cords of death that clung to me. Cause I have come to know love, whose powers overcome. Every insecurity, heaven moves and demons flee now. As I lift my voice to sing, oh, your love is strong. Crippling 
safe enough to be my home my world is crumbling cause I have come to know a love who's stronger than the grave that in my darkest hour raise me up from death to life yeah and resurrection power oh your love is strong oh your love is strong so Father God, we just come before you with humble hearts. We 
just thank you, Father, for being there for us. That we worship you, Lord, and no one else. All the distractions that are taking us away from you or just not keeping us focused on you, Father God. We just thank you for always being there and looking at us and smiling, for being proud. Father, we just thank you for this time of worship and honoring us with your presence here, Father God. Bless this morning's message, Father God, and we just thank you for being here. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you know, I, I was on YouTube this morning just seeing uh, how many messages we've done already. And this is our 16th message on YouTube. Um, I want to thank everybody who's been struggling through it all with us as we were trying out how to live stream. Um, it's not the easiest thing that uh, we've attempted to do. And, and you know, we're, we're, we're working through it. Thank you for your patience. But you know, this is our 16th message, and uh, I was looking on all our videos, and the very first one said that it was three months ago. You know, we've been living through this, this COVID-19 pandemic for the last three months, and I don't know where you're at with all of this. I know I'm still kind of struggling through it, but, you know, now we're finding that, you know, our state is opening up more. We're, we're, we're having a uh, the, our, our inner island flights are no longer quarantined, and, but we're, you know, our mainland flights are still, but you know, things are starting to open up. There is some sort of normalcy happening, but you know, as we're finding more things opening up as far as businesses and, and entertainment things that we can all go to now and, and enjoy, but as, as these things are all opening up, we're also finding more positive cases of COVID-19, that people are, are contracting it more. And you know, what makes me laugh, and I talk to my wife about it, as well as, you know, my coworkers, that, that, you know, when this first happened and all these numbers started going up, there was such a big scare. And then now we're getting these same numbers pop up and, you know, people are not as scared. And I guess we're trying to open up economy at the sake of health rather than we're holding on to health at the sake of economy and, and somehow we're just trying to find this balance. But as we as things are opening up and we're all starting to, you know, get out more, people are going to the beach more. Now I see people on the basketball courts. I see more people in the parks and things going on. And, and you know, as you know, we've been cooped up for so long that now we have this sense of freedom. And so we're all getting out there and, you know, Local people here, they have that slang of, you know, we're, we're pretty much now buckle loose. Everybody's kind of doing what they want to do because they found this freedom from being cooped up in the house. And, but, you know, sometimes, you know, especially if we can't recognize this, that our freedom that we're trying to exercise, that we're trying to get out there and do, actually ensnares us. What we think is freedom for us to go ahead and, and go about is actually causing us to almost be imprisoned or be ensnared. And, and even with our relationship with God, the freedom that he gives us, if we don't respect it or understand it, what it was meant for, we will be ensnared. That freedom he gives us will eventually ensnare us. Now this morning, I want to start reading from Proverbs. Okay, so if you can turn with me to Proverbs chapter 1. And we're going to start reading in verse 1. 
Okay, and, then, and as you're getting out your Bibles and you're getting ready to turn there, I want to thank everybody who's been helping out with our work days, our church work days. We've been, we're having a few throughout the week, and, and uh, you know, we had people tearing out carpet. We've teared out walls in here. Well, we've, we've started the painting. Pretty soon we're going to start putting down the new floors, and, and prayerfully and, and prayerfully and prayerfully we'll be ready for July 5th. Okay, and, and so I want you to, to um, keep watch on our social media, uh, check your emails. I'm going to send them more updates just to let you know, you know, where we are with it. And uh, again, prayerfully, by July 5th, we'll be open again. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 1, let's read starting in verse 1. And it says these words, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom... And instruction for understanding words of insight, okay, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. It says, Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables and the sayings and riddles of the wise. And then verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay? Familiar scripture that we've read time and time again. And, and you know, a proverb is, is, is basically just a, a short saying that, that has truth to it. Okay? That is truth that many of us can live by. Okay? And, and so that's what these proverbs of Solomon are. Okay, and, and, you know, one of the things that I, I've learned in um, serving um, in, in my job for the military is this word called BLUFF. Okay, BLUFF. It's an acronym. I've shared it with some of our leadership, and I'm going to share with you folks this morning. The word is BLUFF, okay, and it's B-L-U-F. And what that stands for is bottom line up front. Okay, bottom line up front. And basically it means... Just straight to the point. Okay, I, you know, we use this in our emails when we're, we're having dialogue to one another. And, and so we just, at the beginning of our email, we write down bluff, and this is what I'm talking about. Okay, and then after that, we give the explanation. I don't know if you, this has ever happened to you. I've been accused of this, that it takes me forever to get to the point. Okay, and, and so this morning, as we're looking at Proverbs chapter 1, we're going to look at the bluff of what Solomon is saying in Proverbs. And if we just, we can gain so much right here from these first seven verses, okay, of, of the bluff of the Proverbs. And, and the first bluff, okay, first bottom line up front, the first straight to the point that Proverbs is about is gaining wisdom, okay? So when we read God's word and when we read these Proverbs, the wisdom that's being imparted in us this morning the, the Proverbs that we're reading is basically for us to gain wisdom. Secondly, it's also for us to gain instruction. Okay? And with that, it's also understanding. So when we read God's Word, we're not just reading to, to check off on our, our daily devotional or to continue our account in our Bible reading or, or to make sure, you know, if anyone asks me, at least I can say, I read this. All of God's Word not just the book of Proverbs, is about gaining wisdom. It's about gaining instruction, gaining understanding. But Proverbs really nails it down specifically and targets about wisdom. Also, straight to the point, Proverbs is about instruction of how we are supposed to live. Okay, We're supposed to live right and just and fair. The wisdom that we gain is also supposed to be for us to invest in our younger people, okay? And it's also about us growing. Now, if we continue reading just a little bit more in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, these words come about. It says, listen, my son. Listen, my daughter, okay? To your father's instructions and do not forsake your mother's teaching. 
Okay, we could kind of gain a picture of, of parents sitting down with their, their child and, and just imparting some wisdom, imparting some, some guidance, some understanding, some knowledge. You know, as parents, and, and, and I'm a parent of, of three daughters, you know, I try to pour into them as much as I can, you know, from my experience, from what I've read, from what I've learned, all of it, even from my failures. So I, I'm trying to give into my, my daughter's lives so they, in turn, can become better. Now, we've just, we celebrated Mother's Day in May, and we just celebrated Father's Day this past weekend, and I hope you had a great time. And, and so what I want to do this morning is, is kind of just close out June with a, 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 another Father's Day type of message. And, and today it's about a daddy's instruction. Okay, it's about dad's instructions into our lives. Somebody once said that it's often the nature of the young people to be slow to receive the wisdom of an older generation. And so as we're talking about a, a dad speaking into a son's life and, and how these proverbs are also supposed to be uh, us as an older generation uh, investing into a younger generation, you know, sometimes there's a, there's a, a little bit of a, of a, of a wall or, or some tension uh, where it's hard to pass down. But for us as an older generation, that's what we're supposed to do. Okay, God is calling us to speak into the young people's lives. As a younger generation, receive it. Okay, just receive it. Learn from our mistakes so you don't have to uh, learn the hard way. Now I want to share this story with you. This, this past week, uh, we had a bee infestation. Okay, this is the first time um, that we've ever encountered bees like this. We have an avocado tree that every time the, the tree starts to flower and get ready to, to, to uh, produce avocados, this, this flower comes out and all these bees always swarm it, okay? But we've never had bees really make a nest. We have a money tree that's outside of our house uh, that it also produces a flower. When that happens, we have a lot of bees come in as well. But again, we've never had bees make a nest. Now, the bees that were at our house were honeybees, so of course, they're going to be making a honeycomb. And uh, Daryl was working uh, on the house uh, last week, and, and he said, like, a big swarm of bees just came by, and, and you know, he, he started to try and swoosh them away and, and all kinds of stuff, and eventually they left. And then they came back again in a big swarm, and then, you know, everybody runs into the house, brings in the dogs, all kinds of stuff. And then they all left. And for a whole week, we didn't see any bees. And so we figured, okay, well, they've, you know, kind of just gone on, moved away. And uh, Thursday, I get a call from my wife. And she says, the bees are back. There's like a thousand of them just swarmed over to the house. And uh, so, uh, you know, I was, I was taken off from work early. And I said I would come home and I would, you know, check it out and, and take care of it and try and get them away and, and, you know, plug the hole that they were trying to make their nest. And, and so I came home and I saw, you know, a couple of hundred bees just swarming outside the bathroom. And, and so my neighbor came out and she was asking me, what am I going to do? I said, well, you know, I'm going to just kind of shoot them with this water hose and get them to go away so I can take care of it, you know, take care of the hole that they were going into. And she goes, you're going to try and drown them? <laughs> and so, you know, we started laughing and for a whole hour. I stood out there just shooting these bees, and they just kept coming and coming and coming. It never stopped. And, and so finally on Friday, we had to hire uh, a bee man, okay, to come and, and take care of them. And in case you don't know, there is a shortage of bees on this island. There's a shortage of, of honey on this island, you know, that the bees are making it. And so, you know, we're calling bee people, we're calling exterminators and, and and so the bee people want to rehome it we talked to the exterminators and they said well you know because that they're a shortage of them we don't really want to kill them it's best that you rehome them okay and, and so on Friday we had this bee man come out and and he he looked at the at the where the bees were coming from and they're were, they're were actually going underneath the house into our plumbing pipes 
okay, the hole that surrounds the plumbing pipes, they were going inside, and, and what happened is these holes led to underneath our bathroom tub, okay, and it also went up into the walls of where, you know, all our um, faucets are and the shower head, and, and so, you know, there was a point where Daryl was under the house, and I went into the bathroom, and I could hear thousands of bees buzzing behind the wall. I'm not even joking with you. That's what was going on. And so when this man came out, you know, he said, you know, there's, there's thousands of them in there. You guys would never have gotten rid of them without my help. And he came in, he did his thing. And, and so, you know, all the bees are basically gone. But for a week, this was happening and, and we didn't know that it was happening. And it's because it was behind the walls. It was underneath the floors. It, it was in places that we didn't see. And, and, and if we don't catch wisdom this morning, okay, if we don't hear the instructions of our dad, we're going to find a honeycomb being built in our house, in our lives, that's not supposed to be there. Even though it might be sweet, even though it might taste good, even though there's many uses for it, it's not supposed to be there. Okay? Wisdom is for our understanding. It's the fear of God that actually starts wisdom. It's the respect. Okay? That's what we have to understand when it comes to our house, when it comes to our lives. Okay? And so this morning is a great morning for all of us to start to take an inventory of what is going on in our lives. And, and we might have to start looking at what is unseen, okay? What is unseen? What is going on below the floor level? What is going on behind the walls? Because those are the things that's going to matter. If you could turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we're going to start reading in verse 1, okay? And, and I'm reading out of the, the NIV in case you haven't noticed. I, I try to just stay with that. But um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, and, and I hope you're listening for the Father's voice as he sits down and he, and he tells us, don't despise his instructions, but give heed to him. Hear it. Okay, so 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, it says these words. It says, for I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into, Moses's, into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, they all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Okay, and, and, and we'll, we'll stop just right there. Okay, so we find Paul addressing the church, and he's telling them that, you know, yes, your ancestors walked with Moses, passed through the sea, they ate the manna, they, they drank from the rock, they drank, drank the water, all of this, okay? And basically what Paul was telling them that, yes, these were God's people, okay? Just like us, okay? We are God's people. And then he says in verse 5, nevertheless... God was not pleased with most of them. And there's a reason why he wasn't pleased. And if we keep reading in verse 6 of chapter 10, it says, Now these things occurred as examples to us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual morality as some of them did. And check this out. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. Okay, sexual immorality. One day, 23,000 people died. Okay, we should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angels, or angel. Okay, and we'll stop reading there. Okay, so 
Paul is addressing the church. He's telling them that, yes, your ancestors did this, and yes, we can all agree that these were God's people, but we can also see that God was not happy because their bodies were scattered in the wilderness, and this is the reason why God was not happy with them. It's because they became idolaters. He starts to list all these things that these people became, and the number one thing, that, or the first point that he brings up, uh, that he was not happy with as they started to be idolaters. And, and, and what, um, you know, most of the time when we think of uh, idolaters, we think of statues and, and little idols and worship and things. But in verse 7, he, he talks about what they were doing to be idolaters. And he was saying that they ate and they drink or, and they drank and they, then they got up and indulged in their own revelry. What was happening was they were self-absorbed. They were worshiping themselves. They were doing everything that they wanted to do, everything that felt good, everything that they liked. They became their best worshiper. Okay? And God didn't like that. It's not supposed to be about us. It's supposed to be about him. And so the, the first thing that, that Paul recognizes that they were doing was they were idolaters. Secondly, they were sexually immoral. Okay? They, were, they, they weren't pure. They weren't abstaining. They were sexually immoral that 23,000 people died in one day. Okay? And, and, and so is our lives pure? You know, all of that is reserved for a husband and wife. Are we getting involved in things that God is saying is not holy, is not pure? Okay, we're taking inventory. You don't want a honeycomb in your house, in your life, that is not supposed to be there. Eventually, those bees would have worked through that wall and gone all through the house. And who knows what would have happened. And so we had to take care of it as soon as we could. And so we find idolaters, and now we find those who are sexually immoral. Okay, and if I could encourage everyone right now, okay, keep your lives pure. Keep it pure. Next, we find that he says that we should not test Christ. And so, you know, I, I was just looking at that over and over again. Test Christ. We should not test Christ. In an amplified version, it describes testing as this. Okay? It says, testing his patience, questioning his purpose, or exploiting his goodness. You know, uh, there's this movie out that, it, it, it's an old movie, and, and you know, I, I'm almost, you know, real hesitant to share this. But I think this is something that many of us do in our lives, that we go ahead and we sin on purpose because we know that, or, or we understand that, well, if I ask for forgiveness, God is going to forgive me. That's exploiting his goodness. When we're sinning on purpose, okay, when we're given into this, that's exploiting his goodness. You are now testing his patience. You are now testing Christ. We're six months into this year. This is a great time to do inventory in all of our lives. Okay? Let's not test Christ. And then lastly, we find the grumblers, okay? And I think a lot of us here, we might find ourselves right there in that last one, those grumbling, those complaining, those that are, are you know, second-guessing the leadership or, or always saying this is probably better or, or, you know, getting other people to jump on your bandwagon and, and you know, to, to start a coup or whatever it might be. It's the grumblers, when we grumble, it does something to our heart. It does something to our character. It changes our spirit, and I want you to know it makes us all look ugly. Okay, so that, that's where we are right now. Okay, again, hear the daddy's voice. Hear the dad's instructions on wisdom and how we're supposed to gain understanding and gain knowledge and grow. Let's keep reading. Verse 11 it says, These things happen to them, as examples, and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. 
So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Everything we've just read, all what the children of Israel went through, gone through, experienced, did, was written down for our example. It was written down for us to gain wisdom. See, there were also reminders. We're supposed to learn from them. In verse 12, Paul puts it right up in our face. If you think you're standing firm, if this morning you say, you know what, Steve, none of this applies to me. I don't grumble. I'm not sexually immoral. You know, I don't test Christ. I don't, I don't take it uh, take or exploit his goodness. I don't take him for granted. I'm not an idolater. If we think we're standing firm, Scripture says, be careful that you don't fall. Really check your heart. We never saw the honeycomb being built in our house. It was undercover. When we live our lives, when, we, when we've experienced this freedom that we don't know how to manage it, maintain it, uh, respect it, or understand it, we're going to allow things to come into our lives that we are unaware of. So be careful this morning and listen to the Father's voice. In verse 13, it tells us that, that uh, no temptation has overtaken anyone except what is common to man. There is always going to be temptation. Temptation, okay, whether you understand this or not, is a part of life. Temptation will always be there. You know, many times it's, it's hard for us to face temptation, especially when we realize it, okay? And, and, and sometimes the, the temptation that we're experiencing you know, it, it, it makes, it, it's so strong that we want to give into it. You know, the feeling is, is stronger for us to, to give into it than it is for us to refrain from it. That's how strong temptation is. And so we have to understand what God is doing when we're being tempted. And I know there are some of us here that we're experiencing temptation and we're giving into that temptation and we don't even know it's happening. And that's why we're doing inventory this morning on our lives. Now, the temptation isn't there because God is waiting for us to fail. He's not just watching and seeing what we're going to do. You know how some people, you know, they, they like to put money on the ground just to see if somebody will come by and pick it up and you know, you, maybe you might see them pull it with a string or, or something. God is not doing that to us. What God is doing, he's imparting wisdom. But God wants us to succeed. He wants us to be able to get over the temptations that are holding us back, the temptations that is making us idolaters, that's making us look at ourselves, the, ones that, the temptation that's making us unpure in sexual morality. You know, it's, it's the temptation that, that is, you know, causing us to, to test Christ when we shouldn't be. It's the temptation that causes us to, to grumble and, and to complain. And, and what God is doing is he wants us to overcome them and understand what he's doing in us so we can get through it. And just remember, he always gives us a way out. Our problem is we don't look for the way out and instead we give in when we should be getting out. God wants us to succeed. Do you want to succeed? We're six months into this year. We only have six months more to finish. We're taking inventory. We're looking at how our lives measure up right now. See, the Father is in heaven, and he's trying to instill some wisdom in us. And he's saying, my son, my daughter, you don't know. This has been going on for the last week. This has been going on for the last month, the last year, a few years. There's a honeycomb being built in your house. And although it might be sweet, and although it might taste good, and although many people might want it, it's not good for you. It's not good for you. 
And so church, I want to challenge you this morning. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? Begin to just start to ask God, Lord, what is it in my life right now? Reveal it to me, Lord, right now. What is going on under the surface in my life? What is going on behind the walls in my life, in my family's life, in my marriage, in my relationships with my coworkers, and you know, whatever it might be, what is going on? Maybe it's a riff or a honeycomb or, or whatever you want to call it this morning. Maybe it's something between you as a son or a daughter with your parents. Or maybe it's some other type of authority. Something is going on. It's being built in there. And this morning, I want you to know that God wants to remove it. We're to learn from those in the past. And that's why it's written down. And so now it's time to get it moved. Amen. Let's begin just to seek the Lord. I want to encourage you right now just to close your eyes. Okay, whether you're here in this house or, or, or whether you're at home right now, you're in your living room, you're with your family, I want you to go ahead and just join hands with your family then. Grab your son, grab your daughter, grab your wife, grab your husband, all those that are watching with you right now. And I want you just maybe to make a, a circle or something. Okay, and we're going to do this together. Okay, and just begin to ask God, Lord, show us, show me. We call on you right now, God. Speak into our hearts. Speak into our lives, God. Lord, we want wisdom to have its perfect way, God. We want to be able to uh, manage and, and live out in the freedom that you've given us in a way that we honor you and respect you. And sometimes with this freedom, God, we let it get away from us and it starts to control us. And that's not how you created it to be. So, God, this morning, show us what's going on. Reveal what we can't see so that we can continue in moving forward with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I, I thank you for all those that are praying right now, those that are seeking your face, God, those who, who have a, a genuine heart that is just asking and wanting to know what is going on. I ask, God, for all of us that have, that even in this list here of idolaters and, and sexual immora immorality and, and, and testing you and grumbling and, and all these different things, God, where we, where we know right now where we're failing, God, that we'd get before you and just lay there broken and say, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us. We're taking inventory today, God. It's a new start. Forgive us. And help us, God, to take our steps forward and walking with you. I don't want to be the same person that I was three months ago when we started this whole COVID-19 thing, God. I don't want to be that same person, Lord. I want to come out of this changed, renewed, with a new energy and a new passion after you, God. Hallelujah. Again, Lord, I, I thank you for each person praying this morning. I pray, God, that you would just move over them, uh, embrace them, God. Let your grace pour out over them, Lord. Let your mercy, God, just pour out as a song. We sang this morning, Lord, of, of how strong is your love, God. Lord, your, your love is so strong. Again, even that while we were sinners, you still sent your son to die for us, God. So, Lord, I thank you for each person here, God. Walk with them, Lord, and bless them, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, if you're watching this morning and you've never asked Jesus into your life, so what you're hearing this morning uh, of, of wisdom from the Father and, and, and you know, you, you've never known God as your dad. I want to pray with you this morning. If you want to invite him into your life, you want to ask Jesus to come in to be your Lord and Savior and, and you know, to help you understand God the Father and his wisdom and his grace and his love, this morning is for you. Okay, and so what I want to do is I'm going to 
pray, and I want you just to repeat after me, and you're just going to ask Jesus to come into your life. Okay, so would you pray with me right now? Bow your head. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I believe that you died on a cross in my place. You gave your life to forgive my sins. And your blood washes me clean from all those sins. Thank you for rising again on the third day. And I believe that you are now seated in heaven next to God the Father. I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and to be my Savior. And give me wisdom to understand how much the Father loves me. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer with me this morning, I want to say congratulations. Um, your life will never be the same again. Uh, we want to help you in your next steps and walking with Jesus. So if I could encourage you to contact us here at Praise Chapel Oahu. We would love to work with you and, and again, help you along your journey. Um, God loves you with all of who he is. And uh, we want to walk alongside with you. Um, I pray that, you know, each person watching this morning will be blessed. Uh, have a great Sunday. Uh, I look forward to July 5th. Um, prayerfully, we'll be ready. Uh, we'll probably be having more work days through this week. So if you can, come and help us. Because the more people we get, the, the faster we'll get everything done. But until I can see you again, I just want you to know how much that I miss you. And I love you folks. And I'm so thankful to be part of this church. So until then, I want to say God bless you.